يا أهل الجنة إن ربكم تبارك وتعالى يستزيركم فحي على زيارته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له من على عباده بمواسم الرحمة والمغفرة وجاد عليهم بأوقات البر والإحسان وأزمان الخير والفضل والامتنان وأشهد أن نبينا محمد عبده ورسوله خير من صلى وصام وأفضل من تهجد وقام صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فيا معشر الإخوان أصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله فإن خير الزال التقوى واتقون يا أولي الألباب يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا ألا فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكما ورد في الرواية وكل ضلالة في النار we begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise him, we thank him, we send salutations upon his beloved messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon all his companions, upon his entire household, and all those who follow him until the day of Qiyamah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for goodness. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all our shortcomings. Amin. <coughs> Brothers and sisters in Islam, the month of Ramadan is a month of spiritual upliftment. It is a month wherein Allah blesses every single one of us with the opportunity of untethered and uninterrupted and undisturbed worship and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a month like no other. It is a month of value. It is a month of virtue. It is a month of rahmah. It is a month of maghfirah. It is a month of forgiveness. And it is a month of change. Every single one of us seated here in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and every single person across the globe has certain qualities, certain aspects of their life that they would like to shine and certain qualities and certain aspects of their life they would like to remove. The month of Ramadan is a month of training, a month of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a month that gives you the best opportunity to create a spiritual relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Create a spiritual relationship with the deen of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We find in the month of Ramadan, it is very easy to come to the masjid. It is very easy to fast. It is very easy to read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? It is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted you this month. Gifted you this opportunity, removed the shayateen, removed interruptions, removed disturbances, so that you are able to develop yourself spiritually, so that you are able to create a bond stronger and strengthen that bond that you have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
and with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that when the month of Ramadan is over, when the day of Eid comes, that relationship, that bond that you have is cemented in your natural habit. It becomes a natural instinct and a habit for you to come to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For you to recite the Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For you to fast, the voluntary fast of the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For you to engage in acts of ibadah that you were not doing before the month of Ramadan. And the only way you are able to truly acknowledge or truly change yourself for the better is by acknowledging your faults today. And acknowledgement comes with knowledge. Knowledge leads to acknowledgement and acknowledgement leads to action. When you have the ilm and you understand that this is the sunnah, this is the practice of the Prophet sallallahu this is what Allah has told me to do, this is what Allah has told me to stay away from, and you have that knowledge, now it is up to you to acknowledge, do I stay away from this? Do I do this? The sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu says, do this, am I doing it? Am I fulfilling the sunnah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't deal in riba. Are we dealing in riba? Am I dealing in riba? Is my business halal? Is my income halal? Is my food halal? So on and so forth. Acknowledgement comes with being truthful to yourself. The Umar radiallahu anhu, he mentioned in the hadith, he says, حَاسِبُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ قَبْلَ أَن تُحَاسَبُوا وَزِينُوا قَبْلَ أَن تُوزَنُوا Take accountability of yourself before accountability is taken of you. And weigh your deeds, weigh your actions before it is weighed for you. The only way you will lead to change is by being accountable for yourself. When you recognize your faults, instead of blaming others, you recognize your individual faults within yourself. You recognize, you understand, you know what, this is my bad habit. This I need to remove from my life. This habit I need to I need to stay away from it. I'm spending too much time in front of the television, let me reduce it. I'm spending too much time on social media, let me reduce it. Let me now begin to take the time that I have reduced from the television, from social media, from wherever else it is, and now put it towards something useful, something to help me in the akhirah. Something to benefit me on the day of Qiyamah when my deeds will be weighed in front of me and my actions, I will be held accountable for my actions. Action, acknowledgement of your faults comes with accountability. When you are accountable for the things that you do and the things that you don't do, is that is when it will lead you to change for the better. Like we began the month of Ramadan, is a month of spiritual development. It is a month that teaches you righteousness, the act of siyam that has been made obligatory for you and I. Is an act leading you to righteousness, leading you to taqwa Allah, leading you to the mindfulness of a creator who, is in, who has inspired every single one of us to be the best of his creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he revealed the Quran to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, through one word, he inspired a generation. Through one word, he inspired a millennium. Through one word, he inspired an entire globe. The Quraysh, the Meccans, they were not proficient in their knowledge. They were not ulama, they were not scholars. But yet, look what has come out from that peninsula. The greatest of the greatest, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, those who followed after them, and those who followed after them, and so on and so forth. Just by one word, the word iqra, read, recite. The word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down on Laylatul Qadr. Through one word, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired change. 
Brothers and sisters, we have the whole Quran at our disposal. And we have translations of the Quran in every language that you want. Are we not inspired? Do we not feel motivated to work towards our deen? To work towards becoming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Some of us think that you know what? Our deen is something that has to come naturally. Our deen is something that, you know what? We don't have to work for it. The Akhirah, as long as I say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh, it is sufficient for me. No, my brothers and sisters. The Akhirah, the Jannah that you and I want, Jannah to Firdaus al-A'la, the highest level of Jannah, requires sacrifice, requires good, requires hard working, requires an effort for, from every single one of us. It requires something out of the ordinary, something extraordinary. The Hadith Qudsi mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you take one step to Allah, Allah takes ten steps to you. You come walking to Allah, Allah comes running to you. Inna nasr Allah Indeed, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is near, but it is up to you and I and every single Muslim to take the first step. Take the initiative, become proactive with your deen and do not become negligible, do not become neg negligent with your deen to the point where it becomes a pastime and a hobby. Na'udhu billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. So going back to the main focus, when we want to implement change into our life, we find it comes with acknowledgement. And when we acknowledge it, we need to be accountable for it. When you acknowledge that there is a bad habit in your life, you may be a liar, you may be a vulgar person, you may be a cheater, you may be a thief, whatever it is, when you hold yourself accountable, recognize that fault, and now you try to implement that change. And I'm not, I'm not saying that that change will happen overnight. A month of Ramadan is not one day fast, it's not two day fast. It's a continuous one month of fasting, one month of obedience to Allah, inspiring within every one of us that ability to change. Inspiring within every one the ability to change our natural inclinations. Something that becomes a habit to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches you in the month of Ramadan something that you've not been doing for the entire year. He teaches you how to develop a habit. 30 days of worship, 30 days of fasting, 30 days of salatul taraweeh. You stand in the night of in, in prayer, in servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is not normal for every single one of us. Throughout the year, you're not praying Salatul Taraweeh. Throughout the year, you're not fasting every single day. But the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires. And He allows us to see a better version of ourselves. Allows us to see a version of ourselves that if we were to come on the day of Qiyamah like that, like how we are such practicing Muslims in the month of Ramadan, we were to come on the day of Qiyamah, it is something that we would be proud of. And this is the change that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires within every single one of us from the month of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the true understanding. Brothers and sisters, the month of Ramadan We've spoken about its virtue, and I'm sure you've heard many, many lectures regarding the virtues of the month of Ramadan, regarding the virtues of the last ten nights of the month of Ramadan, regarding the blessings of Allah in this month, regarding the mercy of Allah in this month. But let this be a reminder to every single one of us that the month of Ramadan has come and it is about to go. There is only about a week left. And if we have not yet developed a relationship with Allah and with the Book of Allah and with the acts of Ibadah that are obligatory for us, 
not the voluntary ones, the acts of ibadah that are farad upon us, if we have not developed relationships with them and become steadfast with them, my dear brothers and sisters, the question I pose to you today is when will you develop those relationships? If the best opportunity is presented to you and you cannot take advantage of that opportunity, when will you take advantage of that opportunity? When will you develop your relationship with the Book of Allah? When will you develop your relationship with your Salah and every act of Ibadah that has become farad upon us? That is the question that I pose to you today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a very striking ayah, an ayah that if we are to comprehend its value and its virtue will bring tears to your eyes. Imagine Rabbul Alameen, the one who is the most majestic, the one who is divine, the one who inspires, the cherisher, the nourisher, the provider, the sustainer, al khalid the one who has created, the one who gives life, the one who causes death, the one who controls every atom within us and every atom around us. Imagine him. When he says, أَلَمْ يَأْنِنِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Has the time not come, O believers, O, o servants of Allah, has the time not come for the believing hearts to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Imagine, رَبُّ الْعَلِمَ The King of Kings, the Most Majestic, is telling you and I, the servants of Allah, the observance of him he is pleading and asking with you, has the time not come? You have committed enough haram in your life. It is, not, is it not now enough? Have you not your, have your belly full of haram? Now is it not time to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Turn towards the obedience of Allah? Indeed, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the month, this is the time to do so. We have only a few moments in the month of Ramadan. And we've heard this before. We are not guaranteed in a month of na another month of Ramadan. Do not become like the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam. What did they say? They said, you know what? We will disobey Allah. We will do something so heinous, so bad, so evil. But then, you know what? It is okay. We will do maghfirah. We will seek forgiveness. And then we will become from those who are good. No, no, no. It doesn't work like that, brothers and sisters. Do not think that, you know what? It's okay, I got the next month of Ramadan to be a better Muslim. I got the next month to be a better Muslim. The Hijjah is coming up. I got that time to be a better Muslim. No. Brothers and sisters, we are not guaranteed another month of Ramadan. We are not guaranteed another season of worship. We are not guaranteed another second in this life without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the true understanding. Barakallah, barakallah, ulana, wa lakum fil wahin, wa nafa'na, wa iyaakum bil ayati, wa dhikri al-hakim. Akhul qawli hadha, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum, wa lisa'i al-muslimin fa astaghfiruhum, innahu kana ghaffara, wa tubu ilayhi, innahu kana tawwaba. Alhamdulillah, ala ihsanih wa shukru lahu ala tawfiqihi wa amtinanih wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ahlihu la sharika lahu ta'ziman li shahuh wa ashadu anna Muhammad al-abduhu wa rasooluh al-da'i ila ridwanih sallallahu wa sallam wa barak alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanih ila yawmi al-deen amma ba'd Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says in the Holy Quran inna Allah la yugayyur ma bi qawmin hatta yugayyur ma bi anfusihim that indeed he Azza wa Jal does not change the nation of the condition of a nation of people until they change the condition of themselves. And we have to understand that this month is a month of change. A month that is a spiritual upliftment and development of our character and conduct and our ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And 
as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhriyat linnas. That you, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are the best of nations, you are the best of people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has inspired and installed within you and instilled within you the ability to be the best. You have, you have been told and you have been chosen to be the best of nations and you have been given the best of books and you have been sent the best of prophets. So are you to be anything less than the best? SubhanAllah. Are you to be anything less than the best in your character, in your conduct, in your hukuk al-ibad, in your hukuk Allah, in your rights with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and your rights with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your code of conduct with your Muslim brothers and sisters, and those who are not even Muslim, with your rights within your family, with your rights with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you... Is it sufficient to be anything less than the best when you have been gifted the best opportunity by the Creator, Rabbul Izzati wa Jalla? When you have been given everything that is in favor for you to build your Jannah, for you to attain that Jannah, let this month of Ramadan be a month where you instill good character, good conduct, and you become the best version of yourself. Let it be a month of Ramadan when you look back in your life, you realize that Ramadan 2023 is the month wherein I became a better Muslim. I became a better father. I became a better mother. I became a better brother. I became a better son. You build that relationship with Allah. Your relationship with Allah starts today. Build your Jannah. Attain your Jannah. Guarantee your Jannah in these blessed days, my dear brothers and sisters, for oh, Wallahi, we do not know if we will be present this time next year. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. Just a few reminders that are coming within the next week. And alhamdulillah, it is important to acknowledge the blessed days that we are in. And as Muslims, we always become excited when Ramadan is drawing near to a close, for it symbolizes the day that has been gifted to us by Allah, the day of Eid. And many of us have already begun preparations for the day of Eid. And many of us have already bought outfits and began creating a plan for the day of Eid. But also it is imperative and important to recognize and understand one of the reasons that we have the month of fasting and one of the reasons that we are Muslims today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires within all of us the acknowledgement of those who are less fortunate than us, the acknowledgement of those who are needy, the recognition and the support of those who are not as blessed as we are. And through that, like our Sheikh mentioned earlier, paying Sadaqatul Fitr should become not something that is a burden upon us, not something that should be taken lightly. SubhanAllah, we have people today that spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on the Eid outfit, but when it comes to time to give Sadaqatul Fitr, it's not they are stingy, but rather they take it lightly. Rather it is something that if I remember, I will do it. If I don't remember, it's okay. No. Remembering those who are less fortunate on a day of celebration is following and uplifting the Sunnah of the Prophet Remember, one of the obligations upon every single Muslim is paying zakah. Remembering, supporting those who are less fortunate. On the day of Eid, before Salatul Eid, pay out your Salatul Fit. It's only seven pounds. Pay it out, remember those who are less fortunate, which is a means of accepting your ibadah and your worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this blessed month, let it not go to waste. Pay it out, be humble with it, be responsible with it, remember those who are less fortunate, and you are, if you are capable and able, try and help those who are less fortunate, even on the day of Eid, and after that, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
to bless every single one of us. Bless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant the goodness. قال الله تبارك وتعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى عليه صلاة واحدة صلى الله عليه بها عشرة الله صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ورضي الله عن الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة والتابعين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الكفر والمشركين ودم العداء الدين اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم انصرهم أينما كانوا يا سميع الدعاء عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون واذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيم الصلاة يرحمكم الله